Welcome, I'm Martine Ripe and this presentation outlines my journey completing a syllabus review for purposes of anti-racism during the 2020-2021 academic year. If you're interested in doing your own syllabus review, the presentation might be of small interest. Although, as I prepared the presentation, I realized I knew a lot less than I imagined. Also, my syllabus review project is unfinished and never ending. I have learned that a syllabus review of the nature I'm doing is an inquiry, and the inquiry can't end because the context continually changes. So who am I? I'm a white woman who's been teaching writing at LCC for 20 years. I attended Henry Ford Community College for the first two years of college a long time ago, where my mom was a secretary in the social science department. I teach Comp 1 at LCC, English 121, formerly writing 121. During my RISE Institute Fellowship at LCC, we were asked to write a short commitment to anti-racism, and mine appears here. I have yet to add this to my syllabus, but I do intend to. The project also derived from my attendance at a Complete College America presentation by Estella Ben Simone. Her presentation led me to an article she wrote, The Case for an Anti-Racist Stance Toward Paying Off Higher Education's Racial Debt in Change magazine. To summarize, Ben Simone's position, relying on the work of Lads and Billings, is that we need to stop framing student achievement in a student deficit model and instead frame the problem in an equity and in an institution deficit model. This is higher education's racial debt. Through Ben Simone's presentation, I was led to her center's syllabus review guide, available both as a web experience and as a 65-page plus PDF file. Quoting from page 7 of the syllabus review guide, it's important to note for purposes of this presentation and my project, a syllabus review is a lot more than a syllabus review. As much as syllabus review is about creating more equity-minded syllabi, it's also about critically and systematically reflecting on your own teaching, as well as learning how to make inquiry a key routine aspect of your practice. In my imperfect and unfinished attempt, I set out to study and revise my syllabus and detailed outline of assignments to assure that each week Black, Latinx, Indigenous, Asian, and all students can see themselves within readings, videos, or images. My focus in this project is anti-racism. During the year-long project, I encountered a number of challenges and affordances. This presentation outlines my syllabus review journey. Basic strategies for engaging in the syllabus review were, for me, review my course like I'm not me, Review my assignments as if I am several different people with different subjectivities. Pretend and imagine. Make a commitment to my racially diverse content by properly integrating it into the course. Integrate more into my course. The importance of a writer revealing their own subjectivity in order that the reader can understand what is being presented. Ethos. Review my course like I'm not me. I looked at the syllabus Language, I looked at the syllabus language and imagined I was a student who had never taken a college class before. I tried to revise all my language to be clear and plain. I tried to sound welcoming rather than punitive in my course policies. Where possible, I designed my syllabus to chunk up information rather than have long, visually dense paragraphs. If information is important, I repeat it in several different places in the syllabus. Deeper than how the syllabus says, though, is what it says. I think one of my most inclusive course policies that took me 20 years to develop is my late work policy. I accept late work with no penalty. Let's see. Here it is. And I state this explicitly in the syllabus. Why do I accept late work? One, 
The most marginalized students will be the most likely to need more time. 2. Being on time is a middle class value and does not appear in the course learning outcomes or the college's institutional learning outcomes. 3. I want the students to achieve the course learning outcomes and it really doesn't matter whether they achieve them in week 4 or week 6. 4. Not accepting late work for me was really a matter of my own convenience. 5. Studies of the cognition and process of learning clearly state we don't learn in a linear fashion and we don't all learn the same way. 6. Faculty themselves as humans, the same way students are humans, often submit work assignments past the due date without repercussions from the college. 7. We are in a pandemic which may affect students' lives and timeliness. 8. The world did not fall apart by my accepting late work. 9. Since students are writing about their own lived experiences, one isn't going to have an advantage over another if one has more time than the other. 10. Not stating my late work policy explicitly in the syllabus means that some students who can self-advocate will ask for more time, and those who can't, won't. Again, marginalizing the most marginalized. Review my assignments as if I am several different people with several, several subjectivities. Pretend and imagine I am a different subjectivity than I am. I refer explicitly to how every assignment maps onto the course learning outcomes to students. This offers a why for the assignment. I give an overview of the writing process we adopt in the class and how it will be repeated for each of the four major writing assignments. I explain that the four major writing assignments are interconnected and are scaffolded by each other. English 121 Overview I refer to the learning outcomes, which are in the syllabus. I explain to the students the writing process we adopt in class, pointing out that the writing process is chaotic and complex, but since as a class we are writing together, we adopt a set process and a linear order. I explain the writing project, the writing process that we use in multiple ways and multiple times, and I constantly refer back to the process. Another example of the writing process, I explain. I explain the four major writing projects and how they fit together. I have detailed explanations in my course, but not in the syllabus. I need to revise the syllabus to contain these explanations. I know my writing assignments all fit together and that I am founding them in inclusivity that honors each individual student's experience as a human. So my assignments are very deeply based in my teaching philosophy. But I still need to work on better articulating that philosophy for myself and for my students. Okay, the four assignments are related together and are and give the student the opportunity to write kind of a 360-degree view of their selected topic. So the students, we spend a couple weeks for the students to kind of dig in to um, different elements of their own lives to decide what it is that they want to focus on. Uh, so I hope that whatever they work on in my class for the 16 weeks we have can have some use after class, you know, for some other venture that they might be engaged in. So the students pick a topic and then the first thing they do is they have to justify kind of the topic that they picked based on their life experiences. So what they have to do is they write a mini memoir in the context of this topic that they've selected. Um, so really the first paper is not about the topic as much as it is about the student writer's relationship to the topic. Then the next paper that they have, uh, they have choices. So they have choices on the second, third, and fourth papers. But the next paper they have, they're basically doing primary research 
about that same topic that they wrote their mini memoir in the context of. So they're either going to do an interview with an expert or an annotated bibliography. And then the third paper, they will take the ethos that they set up in their first paper and the research that they conducted in their second paper and add to that and then they will write a um, they have a choice of writing either a traditional essay with with research and so on where it would have a thesis that would be supported by evidence or they can write uh, a multi-genre project uh, but they still have to have a thesis and they have to have evidence and they have to justify the choices that they make so that's what they do for the third paper and then the last paper is uh, them reflecting on, because of the importance of reflection in the cognition process, they write, they can, they have a lot of choices in how they do the reflection, what medium they use, what genre they use, but they write a reflection about their experience in the class and their development as a writer. Um, I, this is a, this is an area, I actually use this PowerPoint to talk about the writing process, but the area of how all the four papers fit together and how that's like fundamentally based in my teaching philosophy, that's something that I need to work on making much more clear, transparent, and explicit for the students. Basic strategies continued. Make a commitment to my racially diverse content by properly integrating it into the course. I had all kinds of diverse materials, resources, and examples in my course, but they were not required. So I require them now as reading or viewing. I revised and added quizzes and reflections to help connect the readings, viewings to the assignments and the learning outcomes. This is an example of how I required watches So right here, right here, I incorporated a requirement to watch the videos that I have in the class. The head notes that you see here will become part of my syllabus in the fall. Like I said, my syllabus revisions aren't completed because since I was working in the actual cl classes with content revisions, I know I have to go back and update my syllabus. This is another example. You can see this here where it says skim. This is an, another example. All the skims are new. We have a reading that discusses how to read, so the skim actually is defined in our readings. But I now require students to skim the student examples, which are incredibly diverse. The student samples portray a very diverse set of student attributes. Integrate more into my course the importance of a writer revealing their own subjectivity in order that the reader can understand what is being presented. Ethos. It's okay to say I is a reading, emphasizing the, that professional writers use I. The danger of a single story is a video that, with that thesis. Bearing witness is a video emphasizing the importance of bearing witness. Our Beyond the Book readings this year, I incorporated all of them to add diversity. Ethos, the rhetorical triangle, I already used the rhetorical triangle, but I believe the ethos point is more important than ever in assuring anti-racist pedagogy. I need to develop more examples. One I used this year, the topic of Black Lives Matter, and the thesis argues changes should be made in the black community. Would a reader interpret the writing differently depending on whether the author was a member of the black community or a commentator who is not a member of the black community? The students said yes, that would make a difference. Another example could be a news story is released. One is written by a Fox News anchor, anchor, the other or a Fox News journalist. The other is written by a New York Times journalist. Will I read these differently? Yes, the author matters. 
the reader needs to know the writer's subjectivity. So many examples to be developed. A white male anthropologist writes a report on the current practices of Chippewa versus an indigenous, Chip an indigenous Chippewa man writes a report on the current practices of Chippewa. Is there a difference in how I read these reports? I tell my students that teachers will ask you not to use I and thus are asking you to make yourself invisible. The invisibility of the author is a fiction. We cannot escape writing from our own subjectivity and so the best practice is to have integrity in our writing and is to share our subjectivity like I did at the beginning of this presentation. But I tell them I don't want you to get in trouble with your teachers. So anyway, finally, affordances and challenges. Okay, the LCC boilerplate syllable, syllabus language was pretty decent, luckily. I already made a commitment to OER and fair use material. I already provided all course content viewable by week four. I had a lot of racially diverse content already in the class scattered. There are plenty of open educational resources that are out there to use to increase racial diversity representation in my class plus fair use. Students provide fantastic samples. My mini memoir assignment already set up a solid foundation for an anti-racist pedagogy. Challenges. As an individual faculty I have no power over LCC's boilerplate syllabus language. It is what it is. My racially diverse content was not integrated adequately into my course. I was teaching three preps and found it impossible to transform all three classes in one semester. In the fall, I will be able to incorporate all the changes evenly across my sections. My students tell me they are made invisible in other courses with a writing component, that they can't use I. So I'm not sure if my course changes really have any impact at all. We all know a syllabus review is a never ending story. And the credits. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three.